this month, the theme that the Holy Spirit laid in the hearts of a pastor is mercy. Mercy. Every month, starting from January, it has been one theme or the other. And for those of us who made the consciousness to walk in those themes, we have been seeing the demonstration of the faithfulness of God via those themes. In particular, last month, we believe that something significant happened in the lives of many of us. In actual fact, somebody was saying, was it yesterday or, on Saturday or whenever, that that theme on forgiveness, we should have continued to preach it, maybe for three months, because uh, he believed that uh, God is still doing many more things. Because we discovered that uh, forgiveness, unforgiveness rather, it limits our blessings. It blocks the way to our breakthrough. It causes us pain more than the person that has even wronged us. And so we saw the need through the various teachings. And one of the things that struck me, even as we consider this uh, theme on, on, on forgiveness or unforgiveness, depending on how you want to see, is that, you know, <laughs> if, you, if you, for most of us, we look at the person that has wronged us. But the person we looked at in Matthew, 11, uh, Matthew 18 says, Woe unto him by whom offenses come. One of the preachers here said, look, that person is already being condemned. He's already having judgment. So why do you want to bother yourself with that person? Bother about yourself. Because already that person is in judgment with God. And in that passage, the focus is not even on the wrongdoer. The focus is on you, the person that has been wrong. He said, go to him. I pray that as many of us that are still, you know, struggling with forgiveness, we will let go and let God in the name of Jesus. And the grace to do so, it will give to us in Jesus' name. So this month is, is on mercy. And how many of us want the mercy of God? I do. He will release it in abundance in Jesus' name. The passage we looked at is uh, Mark chapter 10. It's taken from Mark chapter 10. This is just going to be, if you like, an introduction. I'm sure many other people will still come forward to come and give uh, the perspective that the Holy Spirit has laid upon their hearts. Mark chapter 10. It's a, family, it's a familiar passage. It's a passage talking to us about blind Bartimaeus. Mark chapter 10 from verse 46. From verse 46, Mark 10, 46. Now they came to Jericho. And as he went out to Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be, to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Praise the Lord. Like I said, there are many perspectives to this. But the key thing that we want to, one of the key things that we want to bring out from here is the fact that even though he was blind, he was asking for mercy. He was pleading for mercy. Why is it that he didn't say, Jesus, come and heal me? Jesus, you can see that I am blind. I want to be able to see. It was mercy he asked for. I pray that the reason that he asked for mercy, which caught the attention of Jesus, that same reason will be revealed to us today. And as we call for mercy, we will obtain mercy in the name of Jesus. So what is mercy? There are different definitions and different perspectives to mercy. But what is clear is that mercy is a love that responds to human need in an unexpected way. 
Mercy is love that responds to our need in an unexpected way. If you like, in an unmerited way. Even though at the core of mercy is forgiveness. Oftentimes when we are saying, Lord, have mercy upon me, we are asking for forgiveness. But from different, you know, Bible passages that I have read, some of which we are going to go through, we'll see that it is not limited to forgiveness. Mercy is not limited to forgiveness. There are more to mercy than just, you know, forgiveness. Mercy is not just the riches of God towards us. It is undeserved. It is unmerited. It cannot be earned. When, for instance, due to our sin, we deserve punishment, mercy says you are forgiven. The judgment you deserve is overruled. And I'm blessing you on top of that. Sometimes we, we, we use mercy and grace simultaneously. But while grace refers to the riches of God, the benevolence of God, the kindness of God in part, mercy on top of being, God being gracious adds some benefits on top. You know, you know that you have deserved to be punished. You know that you have earned this punishment. You have run the red light. An example that I often use. The policeman, the policeman caught you, and he came to you. You know that the next thing is for you to be written off, given a ticket. But instead of you being given a ticket, the policeman gives $20. He says, go and have a good lunch. Who does that? That is the mercy of God. Hallelujah. That is the mercy of God. And today we will obtain that mercy in the name of Jesus. So I said there are two parts to the mercy of God. There is the helping mercy which is the help that we receive for our life to be better, to know God, to serve him better. It is a help. The second one is the forgiving mercy, which is the one we are most familiar with. It is the forgiveness of either one or several sins. But many a time we just focus on the forgiveness mercy. And that is why all the time we are conscious of our wrongdoing and we are asking God to forgive us. But what do we do with the mercy that we have obtained? Because the mercy of God is has a purpose. And that purpose is to transform us. That purpose is to make us better. That purpose is so that, just like Bartimaeus did, we follow after Christ. We don't go back to that sin anymore. That is when God will really be pleased. May the Lord give us that understanding in Jesus' name. So beyond forgiveness... Mercy, the purpose of mercy is to do what? To transform us, to make us to be saved, to make us to work out our salvation with fear and friendly, is to make us to, you know, to, 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 to do away with worldly pleasures, is to desire God alone, to cling to him, and to be saved eternally. That is the focus. We are going to look at a few uh, Bible passages, you know, that talks about mercy. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse 9, we will look at a few, and then we go into the story of Bartimaeus. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. It said, Therefore know that the Lord your God is his God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. He is faithful. He keeps covenant and mercy for a certain group of people, those who love him, and those who does what? Those who keep his commandments. In other words, it is not just for us to say, Lord, forgive me. With his mercy, he expects us to be obedient. When he's merciful to us, he expects us to show him love. I pray that we receive this understanding and we begin to walk in it in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. He said, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I desire mercies and not sacrifice. In other words, even as God shows us mercy, he expects us to show mercy to other people. It is not enough to be able to say, I have done this, I sacrifice is given, just given. But he's saying that there is a mercy that is expected of us to show to others. And I discovered that when you show mercy, 
The Bible says you will also receive mercy. In other words, mercy is a seed we can sow. It is a down payment. You know, for every good thing that we desire, acts of kindness, acts of mercy, especially to those who cannot repay us. There's a story in 2 Samuel. I will get the chapter later. It's a story of uh, the son of um, Jonathan, who was lame in both, in both uh, legs. And the time came that David was looking at, because Jonathan was long dead, he was looking at how Jonathan and, and David, they were good friends. You will remember, covenant friends. And the time came, King David wanted to be able to, 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 to pay back some of the goodness or some of the benefits of the friendship that they had had. Is there any other person in the household of Jonathan? And they recalled. What, was, what came to my mind was the fact that, you know, mercy is a down payment that not only we can benefit from, that our children's children can benefit from. And so today I want to enjoin each and every not one of us to begin to sow seed of mercy. Because not only we will benefit from it, even our children's children will benefit from it in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 1 verse 50. Luke chapter 1 verse 50. He said, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. His mercy is on those. So there are prayers we don't even have to pray. Because when we engage in certain acts that endear the heart of God, he is bound to his word to fulfill what he said. If you are a merciful person, if you are a kind person, if you engage in different acts of, you know, of giving, I'm telling you, you know, there are some things that not only you will enjoy, but your children will enjoy. It is my prayer. There are so many other pages. We can write this down. Isaiah 55, 7. Isaiah 55, 7. Matthew 5, 7, for instance, says, Blessed are the merciful, for they also shall obtain mercy. 2 Samuel 22:26. Let us read that. 2 Samuel 22:26. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 26. He said, "With the merciful you will show yourself merciful, and with a blameless man you will show yourself blameless." I can say that forgiveness and mercy they are interrelated. Praise the Lord. An unforgiving person can never be a merciful person. Because all that person is looking for is a way to retaliate. Is a way to hurt that person that has wrongly done you. But I believe that the Holy Spirit have opened our, has opened our eyes to a few things. You know, to the point that we should know by now that we cannot, for our own benefit, engage in uh, unforgiveness. And we shall be greatly delivered in Jesus' name. Finally, let's look at Romans, Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9 from verse 15. Romans 9 from verse 15. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. I will have mercy. In other words, God reserves the prerogative to show mercy. And that got me thinking. If he deserves the prerogative to show mercy, how can I position myself to obtain the mercy of God? Because I need it. I need the mercy of God. I don't know about you. When he said, I will show mercy, what can I do? We have seen some of the things we can do. He said, to the merciful, I will show mercy. You know, that is why we have to study scriptures widely to see various aspects of it. Don't just limit yourself to the one that says, I will show you mercy. He said, I, my mercy is towards those who fear me, towards those who keep my commandment. That is one thing I can do. When I fear God, when I keep his commandment, God is bound to his word to show me mercy. He said, to the merciful, I will show mercy. And so, if I show mercy to other people, Yes, I should expect God to be able to, even though he said in this passage, and that is what we are going to look at, even as we look at the, 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 
the passage concerning Bartimaeus. He said, he will show mercy, Matthew 9, 15 to 16. He said, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. Verse 16 goes for that. says, so then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. May the Lord show us mercy. May we be candidates of his mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's go back to Mark chapter 10 very quickly. Mark chapter 10. Let's see some of the things that made Bartimaeus to be able to receive the mercy of God so that we can learn from him and do the same thing. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 46. Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, blind Martinius, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. The first thing he did was to position himself at the right place. He positioned himself at the right. He was at the right place at the right time. Anywhere Jesus goes, blessings, miracles, signs, and wonders. He has heard about it. And by the mercy of God, again, he happened to be at the right time. Anywhere you know Jesus will be, anywhere you know the presence of God will be, like right now, I know the presence of God is here. Many have already testified to the faithfulness of God concerning their lives. I am a living testimony, and I know you are. Anytime, unless there is a good reason not to be there, I don't know where anybody else will want to be on Sunday morning except in the presence of God. I don't know why you will want to be elsewhere. Because, like we have said, you never can determine when your breakthrough will come. You never can tell when Jesus will determine that today I am going to answer you. But your own duty is to position yourself, to be there waiting, expectant. This was what Bartimaeus did. And not only that, he went ahead when, as soon as he heard. He was expectant. As soon as he heard that Jesus was passing by, he began to shout. He began to cry. You know, for many of us that are believers, we have gotten to the point that we have taken Jesus for granted. Is it not the same Jesus that I called upon before I left in the morning? Is it not the same Jesus I have been worshipping? Is it not the same Jesus? You know, we have gotten so familiar. We have stopped being expectant. And the Bible says that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. The moment we stop being expectant, then nothing. Even when Jesus is right before us, we will not recognize him. I pray that today you will not miss out because I know he's here in Jesus' name. He cried out. He cried out. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Not only did he position himself, he opened his mouth. The Bible says that when you open your mouth, I will feel it. If you fail to open your mouth, nothing will happen. In Exodus chapter 3, God said to Moses, he said, I have heard the cries of my people. There is a cry you cry that God will hear. And if we go further, we discover that this man cried out in desperation. He didn't mind other people. He didn't mind, you know, the fact that they are saying, keep quiet, you are a blind man. He doesn't have time for people like you. He cried because he had expectation, because he knew that Jesus is the only solution to his problem. He cried. He didn't allow them to, he didn't allow shame. What will people say? He cried because he had a focus. He had something in mind to accomplish. When you come to church every Sunday, what do you come to do? Who do you come to meet? Are you coming out of religiosity, out of custom? Sunday morning we should be in church. I was born into a Christian family. What else will I be doing? But do you come because you know there is somebody here beyond the pastor that is able to meet your need? Do you have that expectation? Have you grown in your relationship with God to the extent that you know that, yes, I am going to worship him, not because my friends are going to be in church, I have an appointment with somebody today, not because I'm looking for a connection, but I want to connect with God. Today, I pray that by the mercy of God, our understanding shall be enlightened. We will change our focus. 
from men unto God in the mighty name of Jesus. Bartimaeus shouted. He cried. They said, mm -mm, keep quiet. The Bible says he shouted the more. Jesus, have mercy up upon me. And he would have mercy upon you today in Jesus' name. Another point that he requested what is most important. When Jesus, when he came to Jesus, eventually, nobody helped him. He was blind. Out of desperation in his blindness, he was able to get himself to Christ Jesus. That is what happens when you are, when you are desperate. No help is needed. What help you need is that person. And you will find your way to that person. Some of us will fast. Some of us will, will ask other people to fast along with us. Some of us will go on a retreat. Some of us will go to, you will do something desperate. You will make a vow, you will make a pledge. Why? Because you have a focus. I pray that our desperation will attract the attention of Christ today in the name of Jesus. And so when he got to Christ, let's see what happened. He cried out the more. So Jesus stood still and commanded. It's like, who is that person crying? It was a multitude. But the voice of one person got the attention of Christ. A multitude. We may not be a multitude, but certainly there are more than two people here. There is a cry you will cry that will get the attention of Christ. And that will make him to stand still. Who is that person? He was leaving Jericho. He had to stand still. Okay, bring him to come. There was something that he did. And then when they, when they called the blind man, saying to be up which child is calling you. Then he threw aside his garment. I don't want to dwell on that because of time, but there is, there is a significance. He rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered, what do you want me to do for you? The ma blind man said, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. But prior to that, what was he saying? Have mercy upon me. Why is he asking for mercy? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Why was he asking for mercy? Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 16. Let me start from 14. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The actual need, the physical need of Bartimaeus was for him to receive his sight. But it was mercy. Look at that. Look at the progression of that statement. He said we should come with boldness. Would you consider Bartimaeus bold? He was bold. He was, he, he was bold. He didn't regard his blind situation. He didn't regard the people around him. He came boldly. He recognized Jesus as the grace of God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says we may obtain mercy. When we come to Christ, the first thing we need to obtain is mercy. Before any kind of help will come. If we don't have mercy, help cannot come. Our need cannot be met. He said that we may first of all obtain mercy. And find grace. Which means in the presence of God, everything that we need is available. But what will cause us to be able to enter into his presence is what? Obtaining the mercy of God. Somebody will obtain that mercy today in Jesus' name. And mercy is not something you obtain just once and for all. It is something you need all the time. Each time you come before the presence of God, ask for his mercy. And he will grant it unto you in Jesus' name. Like I mentioned before. Jesus reserved the right to show mercy, but through asking, through our acts of mercy, you know, he cannot. Through our fear of him, he said it's mercy is upon those who fear him. Through our obedience, he said he will be merciful unto those who have, you know, who keep his commandments. He will not but have mercy. Another thing that I want to emphasize in that portion is that he possibly knew why he was blind. He knew why, he, why was he praying for mercy? Like we discussed among the, he possibly, you know, some of the things, afflictions, challenges we have, we know, in some cases, we know what is responsible. We know. Other people may not know. You know, we are talking about, about a man that is physically blind now. 
that may not be our own challenge. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that affliction is. But let's use the example of this man. He was asking for mercy, possibly because he knew what was responsible. Maybe it's not written in the Bible. Maybe he committed adultery with somebody else's wife or something. And he was caught. And in the process, you know, his eyes were plucked out. Maybe he stole. Maybe, I don't know what he did. But there was something, and I believe that was what Christ responded to. Because he knew he stood condemned. Because he knew he deserved to be punished. Because he knew he deserved that state. I'm talking about possibility. But I'm thinking beyond the physical. What could have attracted Jesus to Bartimaeus? Jesus, I believe, was addressing the background to his blindness. He was responding to the real problem. And when he asked for mercy, Jesus knew that it was actually mercy he needed. The Bible tells us in the book of James, I believe James chapter 3, um, I can't remember, James chapter 2 verse 13. Let's look at it, James chapter 2 verse 13. James 2, 13. It says, for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown. If you show no mercy, your judgment is you. It says, but mercy triumphs over judgment. And because he obtained mercy, the judgment that was due to him was overruled. Jesus decided to heal his blindness. Today, whatever may be your affliction, whatever may be the challenge, whatever may be the problem, if you are sincere enough to admit that unto the Lord, he will show you mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. The moral of that lesson is that let us address the background to our affliction. There are people among us who will call people to pray along with us. But the reason why we want to pray along, we are not even addressing it. We are asking them to pray along even for something that is on the surface. Whereas the Bible says God looks at the heart and it does not look at faces. And finally... Let's go back to Mark chapter 10. Let's see what he did. Mark chapter 10. We are talking about the mercy of God. Mark chapter 10, uh, verse 52. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his, his sight and followed Jesus on the road. He exercised his faith in Christ. Hebrews eleven six says that without faith it is impossible to to please God. Those who come to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder. If you come to him believing, just like our grandma said earlier, if you pray to God, believe. Don't just pray for the sake of praying. He believed that Christ is able to heal him and Jesus responded to his faith. Today, whatever you ask him in faith, believing, he will grant unto you in the name of Jesus. And finally, after he received his sight, he followed Jesus on the he followed Jesus on the way on the road. He followed him. He didn't just say that, oh, I have received what I needed. That is okay. I mean, my prayers are already answered. I don't need you anymore. That is the aspect of mercy that I want us to pay attention to. What do we do with the mercy of God? This man received mercy, but he did something with it. The Bible says, after that, he did what? He followed. He followed. Shall we rise up on our feet?